हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसेस एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आईआईटी गुवाहाटी एंड व्हाट वी वर डिस्कसिंग वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड इन दिस कोर्स व्हिच इज ऑलमोस्ट अबाउट टू एंड सो फॉर व्हाट वी हैव डिस्कस वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स सो वी स्टार्टेड विद अ वेरी बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स वेयर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द Uh, what is the biology and how the biology is involved with through the different types of experimentations by the scientists and so on so in in this particular module what we are going to do is we are actually going to uh, give you an overview of whatever we have discussed so far since your exams are coming up very shortly uh this kind of uh, revision and this kind of uh, recapitulations of whatever we have discussed so far is actually going to help you to face the final exams or it will help you to prepare for the final exams so let's start our uh, lecture today and what we are going to do today is we are going to discuss about the very superficially we are going to go through with the content what we have discussed so far in the last previous uh, 11 modules and uh, and then we are going to deal some of the aspects which i feel that important for you to uh, understand and uh, hopefully this is actually going to help you in terms of preparing for your exams so what we have started with we started with the very basic understanding about the classifications then we started about uh, of the living different types of organisms and that could have uh, help you to understand how these organisms are complicated how they are actually been uh, diversified from the other organisms and so on and uh, from where this diversity comes this diversity comes because the every organisms is trying to evolve over the course of time and that's how they are actually been evolved into the different types of species and uh, different types of organisms uh, with the basic understanding about the classification and the evolutions we have uh, then further moved on to tell you give you the very uh, detailed analysis or detailed uh, description about the different types of cells what are been found into the prokaryotic or the eukaryotic cell in the prokaryotic cell we discuss about the cell wall we have discussed about the cell wall of the gram negative and gram positive we have also discussed very briefly about the gram staining and so on and then we have also moved about the eukaryotic cell so let's uh, discuss uh, some of these aspects in detail uh, and uh, i hope uh, it will help you to prepare for your exams so we'll start with a very basic uh, same questions what is biology uh, biology is a is a field of science where you are actually going to deal with the different aspects of the uh, living organisms so as the name suggests biology is a submission of the two words one is called as the bios the other one is called as the logos and the bios means the living organisms whereas the logos means the study so this means the biology is the definition of the biology is that it is the field of science which actually study the living organism and that is known as the biology uh, so uh, and the, the the person who actually study the field of biology are called as the biologist uh, now since we are talking about the biology and the biology is a field of science which is study the living organism it is important for us to even discuss about the what is living organism and how the living organism is different from the non living organisms so what is living organisms living organism we have discussed in detail about the different types of the properties of the living organisms and here i have given you a comparative differences or comparison of the living organism versus the non living organisms so they are different in terms of the intake of the food their their mode of how they are actually generating the energy and how they are actually disposing of the waste material now we have also further moved on and discussed in detail or defined what are the conditions which is actually going to define as the living organisms so one of the important feature of the living organism is that it is should be having a self growth or self renewal which means the growth should be endogenous rather than exogenous uh, and it should have the endogenous ability to produce the energy right 
and then should have a movement with an exception that plants they do not move, but the plants are also the living organisms and then they also should have the ability to self replicate. And uh, once we understood the, uh, the living organism, once we understood the biology and how the, the different biologists have studied the bi field of biology and their contribution into the biology, we further moved on to ask the first question is how we can actually be able to classify the different types of organisms. So, there was a, there was a proposal about the five kingdom system. In the five kingdom system, we have the five different kingdoms like Monera, Protesta, Fungi, Planty and Animalia and how these five kingdoms are being, you know, how the animals are being classified into or uh, how the organisms are being classified into the five kingdom is based on the differences or the similarity among the different types of organisms. So, then further we move further moved on to discuss about the different types of criteria what people have used to classify the living organisms. So, we discuss about the five different criteria like the level of organization, symmetry, uh, different types of the um, membranes are present or diploblastic or triploblastic organizations, segmentations and nodocord and based on these kind of criteria of the classifications, the whole animal kingdom is being classified into the uh, multiple uh, sub phylum and phylum. So, if you see it uh, how the kingdom Elimedia is being uh, distributed, if the, so based on the level of organization either you can have the cellular level organization or the tissue or the organ system of the organizations. Then we in within the symmetry you can have the asymmetrical, radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry. Based on the body cavity, it could be a silomate, uh, silomates, or within the silomates, uh, you can have the pseudo silomates or the silomates. And then within the and based on this, uh, it, it has been divided into the different phylum. For example, within the porifera, so porifera is a cellular level organizations, mostly asymmetrical acylomates. So that's why these kind of organisms which are following this kind of classific uh, uh, organizations is being classified into the porifera. Similarly, when the organization is the tissue level or organ system, then it could be radial or bilateral. So, if the, if the symmetry is radial and the organism is acylomate, then it can either be a cylentrata or the cetonophora. And then if it is the symmetry is bilateral, then it can be acylomate, pseudocylomate or the silomates. If it is a acylomate, then it can be a platyhelminthes or the platforms. Then uh, if it is a false ileum that is the pseudo silomate then it can be Eschihelminthes and if with the true silomate then it could be the Anelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermota, Hemicardata and Chordata. Remember that this is a summary of what we have discussed in the previous module. So, we are not going to discuss in detail about all of the properties of these uh, uh, phylums and so on. And uh, if you see here is the core data is at the bottom and the core data is, is the well defined and the well developed organisms. Uh, so, after this we have also discussed about the how the organisms are being evolved or how the organisms are being originated onto the earth. So, what is the prerequisite of the life on the earth because there is only one planet on which the, uh, the life exists and that is the earth right. So, there is a there is a condition. So, primitive earth with very little or no oxygen. So, that was the first criteria that why the earth has been chosen as the planet for the uh, origin of life right. And then we have the lot of inorganic raw material for the origin of life. For example, the, all these inorganic material is required to produce the organic material. And then it also require an energy source. So, energy source could be the solar radiation, electric discharge, volcanic eruptions, heat, cosmic rays, or the radioactive decays. And then there is a infinite time. So, as per the estimate it took almost 1 billion years from the formation of earth to the appear of the life and that is why such a long time is required for the origin of life. And uh, origin of life is a very very complicated process and there are many hypotheses what has been proposed for uh, explaining the origin of life on the earth. 
So we have discussed about the six uh, different type of theories. We have discussed about the theory of special creations. We have discussed about the theory of spontaneous generation, theory of catastrophism, theory of cosmozoic, theory of eternity of life, and then we have also discussed about the modern chemical theory. So in the theory of special creation, God is the creator of earth and the organisms, and there are different uh, steps in which the people have explained how the God has created the earth and as well as the different types of organisms. And there are all lot of contradictions for most of these uh, theories including the modern theories. So as far as the experimental evidences is concerned, the theory of spontaneous generation and the theory of modern, modern theory of chemical theory is actually being explained by the different types of experiments. Apart from that, there are so many experiments are being done to overrule the uh, some of these uh, you know the proposals. So one of the classical example which is always been done by the Liu posture is that where the posture has actually grown the broth into a S shaped curve. So in a posture what the posture has done is he has taken the S shaped uh, S shaped curve tube and he took the hay infusion in the flask and boiled it for the several minutes. He boiled it so that the broth is going to be uh, sterile and after cooling down the, the steam which comes out from the broth is actually being condensed into the this, this S color tube okay? and it actually act as a barrier to stop the entry of microorganisms. So no life appeared in the flask for several months. Analysis of the condensed water indicate the appearance of the microorganism of the neck and the breaking of the S tube. So when if he wants to confirm that it is basically because of this kind of barrier, he broken the, uh, the S tube and that is how he got the microbial growth. And that is actually been an experiment to disprove the some of the earlier exist or earlier proposed theories. Uh, subsequent to that, the people have this also um, proposed the modern theories and the modern theory is completely been a theory which is been dependent on the experiments. So the modern theory or the chemical theory of uh, the origin of life is being uh, proposed by the uh, the AI Orfrin and Haldane and it has the following assumptions. The spontaneous generation of life under the present environment is not possible because the present environment is uh, full of oxygen whereas in the primitive earth it was the absence of oxygen. Then the earth atmosphere approximately 1 billion year is a very different from the current conditions. Then the primitive earth atmosphere was reducing in nature, currently the earth's atmosphere is oxidizing in nature. Under these conditions, the chemical molecules react with each other through a series of reactions to form the organic substances and the other complex uh, biomolecules. And from where they are getting the energy, they are getting the energy from the solar system energy and as well as the UV radiation. To uh, prove these hypotheses, the uh, Stanley Miller has done a very classical experiment and where he has actually taken a gaseous mixture, uh, water, methane, ammonia and hydrogen and into a flask and that is how he circulated that flask into a uh, apparatus which is being uh, designed by the Stanley Miller and based on this analysis what he have found is that uh, the a mixture of the amino acids are being formed like the glycine, alanine, aspartic acid and all that. And uh, I have given you a link here in case you want to see the demo of the how or uh, uh, actually I animated the movie, you can actually be able to click this and it will actually going to give you the uh, animations how the this uh, experiment is being performed. So based on the modern theory, there are different steps in which the uh, origin of life is actually being done, right? Uh, for example, the in the step one, there will be a formation of the inorganic molecules. So inorganic molecules are being formed from the in uh, from the condensation of the different types of. So you have the inorganic molecules like the ammonia, acetic acid, and so on. And all these organic, inorganic molecules are then subsequently being uh, present into the primitive oceans and that will give rise to the formation of the monomeric organic compound or the simple organic compounds. 
then in the step 3 these uh, simple organic compounds were reacting with each other to give you the complex organic compounds such as the glycerin, ribose, glucose and so on and once these uh, complex organic compounds were formed they were be reacting with each other to form the uh, coiservates and these are the uh, aggre proteinaceous aggregates where the protein is uh, present inside and whereas the lipid is present outside. And uh, the coiservates were dividing into uh, the into the multiple small ones and that is how the coiservates were eventually being developed into the primitive cell or the first cell. And that is how the people have discovered uh, has proposed the different types of the uh, uh, different types, different steps uh, in which the or uh, origin of life could have been happened onto the earth. Uh, these all these events are being proposed based on the data what people have you know developed by the Stanley Miller experiments or some of the presumptions. And uh, now it is true that the primitive cell is being formed into the primordial action, but how primitive cell is involved into the much complex multicellular system and as well as the very very complicated organisms like humans. So for that the people have discovered or people have proposed the different types of the theories to explain the evolutions. So there are uh, chemical evolutions. So chemical evolution is being supported by the many types of evidences like the morphological and structural evidences. And uh, based on the this, the people have discovered, people have proposed the mechanism of evolutions. So what we have discussed in this particular course, we have discussed about the three theories. We have discussed about the theory of inheritance of acquired character, and that is the theory which is given given by the Lamarcks. And then we also discussed about the theory of natural selection, which is being done, which is being proposed by the. Uh, Charles Darwin and then we also discuss about the Hugo de Vries theory of the mutation theory and all of these theories were having some of the positive aspects and some of the negative aspects and they were also heavily being criticized because most of these theories were based on the uh, non-scientific experiments. They were be done, they were be uh, based on the either the population studies or some of the mutational studies. So, Based on these uh, discussion about these theories, uh, it has been sure that the uh, mechanism of evolution is still unclear. It could be a mixture of the Hugo de Vries theories of mutation theory and as well as theory of natural selections. But the Lemax theory is also very much being uh, used or very much relevant when the people have also taking up the uh, modern uh, molecular uh, data or molecular uh, components into that. So, because when the Lemarck has proposed its uh, uh, theory of inheritance of acquired character, there were so many informations about the genetics, about the DNA and all those kind of material is not, uh, were not known, right. So, that is why the, some of the, the, all these theories were uh, good to explain many things, but they were be also lacking the uh, full proof uh, concept to uh, explain the mechanism of evolutions. So once we understood the mechanism of evolutions, we have also discussed about the different types of cells. So when we talk about the different types of cells, we have the and cell is the structural and functional unit of life and the cell is it could be a prokaryotic cell or it could be a eukaryotic cell. Uh, in the eukaryotic cell, you can have the plant cell or the animal cell. And in this particular module, when we were discussing about the different types of cells, we discuss about the differences between the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cell. So that as far as the differences is concerned, the prokaryotic cell, the major difference is that the prokaryotic cell does not contain the nucleus. It only contains the circular DNA, which is present in the cytosol as a free material. Whereas in the eukaryotes, the DNA is formed in the presence of linear chromosome and, and it is being encircled within a well-defined double membrane nucleus whereas and which does not have a direct connection with the cytosol. Uh, as far as the replication is concerned, the prokaryotes have the single origin of replications whereas the eukaryotes have the multiple origin of replications. Uh, uh, as far as the gene is concerned, the prokaryotic gene does not contain the introns whereas the eukaryotic gene contains the intron. Uh, as far as the ribosome, ribosome is 70S in the case of prokaryotes and it is 80S in the case of eukaryotes. 
and transcription and translations. Translation and translations are codes uh, work, occurs together in the case of prokaryotes, whereas the transcription in nucleus and the translation in cytosol is different. So, transcription occurs in the inside the nucleus, then the RNA is formed and then it transported outside and it will be used for the translations. Then we discuss about the structures of the eukaryotic cell and uh, first thing that we have discussed, we have discussed about the differences between the plant cell and the animal cell. So, this is the animal cell and this is the plant cell and there are so many differences what we have discussed between the animal cell and the plant cell and then subsequent to that we have also taken up the different types of organelles what are present in the either the plant cell or the animal cell. So, we have discussed about the mitochondria, plasma membrane, chloroplast, nucleus, we have discussed about the uh, the role of these um, um, uh, organelles into the overall functioning of the cell and we also discuss about the uh, organelles of the vesicular trafficking like uh, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies and lysosomes. And uh, uh, apart from that we have also discussed about the, uh, the differences between the plant cell and the animal cell. Uh, subsequent to that we have very briefly discussed about what is the requirement of uh, different types of cells for their replications or that uh, for their growth. So, what you, the, for every cell it requires the protein, carbohydrate, lipids and DNA and RNA. Protein is being supplied in the form of amino acids, carbohydrate in the form of sugar, fatty acid and nucleotides and all these are required because the uh, you want to synthesize the different types of biomolecules. And uh, we also discussed uh, very briefly about how you can be able to grow the cells under the in vitro conditions by preparing the uh, mammalian cell culture media and how at uh, and we have also shown you a very small demo how you can be able to prepare the uh, cell culture media. Uh, apart from that we also discuss about the cell cycle and the cell cycles are actually being uh, you know been discussed so that you understand that the when the a one single cell is dividing and giving rise to the two cell it does not happen in the all of a sudden it actually cell undergoes the different phases where you have the uh, g1 phase s phase g2 phase and m phase so within the g1 phase it actually prepare the cells for the cell D, for the dna applications and in the s phase there will be a dna application or the synthesis of dna and then in the g2 phase it actually prepare the cell for the division and then within the uh, m cell it is actually going to go for the division so after the m phase it is actually going to divide and give you the two cells one the one mother cell and the other one is a daughter cell now, after discussing the cells, the cell cycles and so on and while we were discussing about the cell cycle, we have also shown you a couple of demos how you can be able to study these events under the uh, in vitro conditions use, utilizing the flow cytometer. We said that what are the molecules are responsible for uh, you know governing these uh, processes and uh, there are four molecules which are present in the cell these are DNA or RNA, lipids, protein and carbohydrates. So, we also discuss about the different types of biomolecules. So, DNA and RNA is required for maintaining the genetic information, lipid is required for producing the energy and as well as it is a blending block because the lipid is a part of plasma membrane. And then we also discuss about the carbohydrate. So, carbohydrate is the energy production and as well as the building blocks. Some of the carbohydrates are being used for modifying the protein as well as the lipids. And the protein is a building block, it is work as an enzyme and it also works as a metabolism. So, in this particular module when we were talking about the biomolecules, we discussed each of these biomolecules in detail, their structure, their functions and their role in the governance of the different types of cellular processes. So, we started with the nucleic acid and uh, most of the organisms actually has a DNA as a genetic material whereas the minor fraction such as the viruses has RNA as a genetic material. So, DNA or RNA is the biopolymer and it is acidic in nature and that is why it is called as the nucleic acid. In eukaryotic cell the nucleic acid is present within the nucleus whereas in the prokaryotic cell it is present as the free form into the cytosol. The first nucleic acid was isolated by the Friedrich Metzger in the year of 1868. And then we discuss about how we people have 
identified as that the nucleic acid is the genetic material. So, uh, this is the classical experiment of the Frederick Griffith in the year of 1928 where he has taken the two different strains of the uh, bacteria and one is virulent stain, the other one is non-virulent stain and then he has injected the mice with these uh, virulent strains uh, in the four different conditions either he taken the live strain live uh, uh, you know non virulent stains or heat killed uh, uh, virulent stains or the mixture of that and based on these he has concluded that the uh, dna is being a genetic material because the when he has used a mixture of the live uh, attenuated uh, uh, strain versus uh, plus heat killed uh, uh, heat killed uh, virulent strain the DNA from the virulent strain is being transferred into the R strain and that is how it is actually going to also be responsible for killing of the mice. And then we will discuss about the carbohydrates. So, carbohydrates are the mixture of the uh, are, are the biomolecule which are formed by the carbon hydrogen and oxygens and the uh, they are the primary producer of carbohydrates. So, plants are the primary producer of carbohydrate by utilizing the carbon dioxide, water and sunlight and we have also discussed about the different steps of the photosynthesis and carbohydrates are present in a very simple as like monosaccharides to complex forms such as polysaccharides and the glycoconjugates. And what is the role of the carbohydrates? The carbohydrates are participating in the different types of metabolic reactions and that is how they are actually being used very extensively for generating the energy. So, this is the uh, uh, you know the role of the carbohydrates, uh, it is actually being used for energy production. So, energy whether it is for the prokaryotic cell, animal cell or the plant cell. So, we have the two different types of cellular metabolisms which could be anabolism or the catabolism. Anabolism is the biosynthetic pathway where you are actually going to have the synthesis of the different types of biomolecules. So, it is actually a pathway where the energy is going to be consumed whereas, the catabolism, the catabolism is the energy producing reactions and where actually the carbohydrate is actually participating into the cellular metabolism. So, we in when we were talking about the cellular metabolism, we discuss about the glycolysis, we discuss about the Krebs cycles and we also discuss about the ATP, uh, you know the ATP balance sheets for the uh, glycolysis and as well as the Krebs cycle. Subsequent to that we discuss about the lipids and the lipids are the heterogeneous group of the naturally occurring compounds including the fat and all that. There are, they have the common property of being a relatively insoluble in water and they are soluble in non-polar solvents such as the ether and chloroform and uh, lipid is made up of, of the two different types of groups. It has the backbone which is made up of, of the glycerol and it also has the fatty acid. So, it can have the three fatty acid chains and that is how this is called as the uh, lipids. Then we discuss about uh, very extensively about the proteins. So, proteins are made up of, of the amino acids and where the amino acid is actually having the four groups attached to a single carbon. So, you in one side you can have the amino groups, other side is carboxyl group. The third is the uh, side chains and the hydrogen and based on the R chain it, the amino acid could be of different types. So, we have the 20 different types of amino acids which are present in the proteins and the protein is actually adopting the four different types of structures. It could be a primary structure, secondary structures, tertiary structure and the quaternary structure. So, what you see here is this is the primary structures where the amino acids are attached to each other by the peptide bonds. And then it, that give rise to because when you have the uh, amino acids attached to each other, they fold to each other and that is how they are going to form the secondary structures. So, secondary structure could be alpha helix, beta sheets and turns. And once the cells, these secondary structures folds to on each other, it actually gives the tertiary structures and the quaternary structures. Uh, proteins are also playing a very crucial role in terms of the different types of functions. So, proteins could be func uh, working as an enzyme, they could be having a, a receptor for the ligands, they could be metabolic intermediate as a substrate, they could be cell surface receptors, they could be having a role in the different types of cellular processes like phagocytosis, antigen presentations and antimicrobial killing 
and the proteins could have the role in the inflammation and tissue repair and remodeling and all these functions we have discussed in details and how the proteins are participating into uh, any of the uh, some of these reactions. So with this uh, we have uh, completed our uh, summary of the uh, of the this course up to the biomolecules. So what we have discussed we have discussed about the classifications, evolutions, uh, understanding the different types of cells whether it is prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell and the organelles their structure their role and then we ultimately also discuss about the biomolecules. And subsequent to that we are also going to discuss or summarize what we have discussed into the cellular processes and as well as the physiological processes in our subsequent lectures. So with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture we are also going to summarize what we have discussed into the cellular processes and the uh, human physiology. Uh, so with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you.